Hello everyone, my name is Zug Guerre and this is Hugo's Desk. Welcome to another edition of You Just Have To Be Better. This time we're going to talk about relighting in Nuke. Let's just get started, shall we? So relighting in Nuke is something very controversial, of course. Now, you should never use relighting in Nuke if you have access to the CG scene and if you actually have enough time to relight or re-render your shot. So saying this means that whenever you have the opportunity, you should always go back to CG to relight or to do any kind of rim lights that you might need inside of your CG. Now, taking into this account, you're probably wondering why the hell am I doing this tutorial? Well, it's very important for you to understand that A, sometimes you don't have time to re-render again. B, sometimes you have no control over the CG, so maybe the CG artist has finished his work, so you have to do it yourself. C, you might not need actual proper relighting. In this case, that's the way that I use the most, is when you actually need to just do a few little hints of color correction, or maybe use a few bounce lights just to establish a few more creative choices in terms of the grading of the scene. So really use relighting with caution, otherwise it could make your scene look ridiculous very fast. First thing you need for relighting to work is you'll need a normals pass and you'll need a position pass. The position to points now is something that we've discussed uh, in detail on the video that you can click right now in the screen. But basically once you have your position pass, what you will need for this to work will be a node called the Relight. Now this node is part of Nukes 3D system and as soon as you bring it in, it has two different inputs. Now one of them is the light. I'm just gonna put a normal light here. So it's an absolutely normal light. Color means the RGB of the scene. So I'm gonna just plug this in into my actual render uh, Nuke. So today we're gonna be using one frame from the Assassin's Creed uh, trailer that I directed last year. If you want to see uh, more about this trailer, you can click on this link on the screen right now for you to actually check it out. And you can also see the full breakdown of it on Fire Dot Smoke's website. Now, as soon as you put in some lights and some color, you can see that the real light now has another input, which is cam. Now I'm going to plug this in into my camera uh, because you do need a full exported camera for this entire thing to work. And last but not least, you have a material. In this case, you have a choice of materials. You can either use a diffuse material, you can also use a specular material, a fong, a fong material, or you can use a basic material as well, which has a combination of both materials. Uh, at this stage, we're just going to start with uh, a specular material so I can show you what uh, this is. So I'm going to just plug in the specular to that. I'm using two viewers here so that I can show you a bit better both things. I'm also going to add the light pass into my light scene uh, in the CG and I'm going to put my viewer to that so that I can actually see the light in my position uh, pass here. You don't see anything because the relight node requires you to specifically tell him where the passes are. So I'm going to choose normal pass from my list and I'm going to choose my position pass from my list. Now these two passes are here because I have brought in all the passes into my stream before. As soon as you do that you can actually see that there is something going on uh, on the output of the real light. Now this of course is just a specular pass and the reason for the light to be below is because just like you can see on the 3D representation, the light is in below. So now, this is why you need the position pass. The position pass allows you to actually preview in real time where you're putting this light up. As you can see, now I have the light in front of them. And as I put it closer and closer to their face, this kind of gives you a representation of where the light is. So as you can see, now I have kind of a specular material. Um, and the cool thing with this is that now I can create some nice rim lights. So imagine that I decide I'm going to change this to a spotlight instead of a normal light. And I'm going to just uh, basically direct the spotlight into them. And so the cool thing with using spot is that now I can direct where I want to light up my extra light. So imagine for a moment here that I want to do a rim light behind him. So I'm going to point the light to him. I'm going to lower it a bit more and actually make it higher. And there you go. So this would be our, my, my first rim light. So now you're probably asking yourself, why, why don't I just go to 3D to do this? Well, 
cool thing with this is that you can do it much faster um, and also you can use it for really specific color corrections that you can make. Now once you're happy with where your rim is and at the moment you can see that there's an actual rim light, it's a light that is behind the statues just like you can see here, I'm going to use a shuffle node and I'm going to put it into my stream. So this would be my first light. Now remember we use the specular um, in here. So now if I go to my stream as you can see here I have my direct and then I have my subsurface scattering. Then I have my reflection and then I have my specular. Now, because I already have a specular, I'm going to shuffle my new specular into the specular area of my composite. The reason I'm doing this is because I never uh, mix things around. It's always easier for your own sanity to organize yourself when you're doing these kind of things. And now I'm gonna also make sure that I have my alpha channel and I'm gonna put an unpremolt here. And now I have my extra light. Now I'm gonna put a merge node with a plus and I'm gonna merge it into my other specular. So now you can see I don't have just the specular pass that the CG artist gave me. I have a little extra specular. So if I now look at the full comp, this is just enough to just give me just a little hint of uh, extra rim light and especially handy here if you want to actually intensify these kind of lights here and if you actually want to have a nice detail on the side there. Now one thing I should warn you is that whenever you bring in these kind of lights you have to be careful with the edges because the edges of the scanline render don't really match the render. The reason for that is because your scanline render will never be as good antilizated as the actual render. So you see the render here looks very pretty. It has a very good uh, filtering system. Now the real lighting does not. The filtering in the real lighting is much more harsh. It actually does not match up with the edge of your CG. So as you can see, if you compare it from one to the other, it actually is not matching. Now it's very easy to, for you to fix this. The only thing you need to do is to use um, a edge extend node. So I, I'm gonna use my favorite one, which is the color edge. And this should give me the ability for me to um, basically edge extend my, I'm just gonna tidy up this a bit here. So I'm gonna do basically just edge extend before I shuffle here. Now the mask of course should be still the same one. I'm gonna of course invert my mask. And so the edge extend is going to create extra edges around my CG that came out of new. Okay, so now you can see that now, as I bring it in into my shuffle node, it shuffles out. I don't need to unpremolt it. Um, I do plus it in. So now I'm actually using it to relight my scene. But then because I'm pre-molting it now, I actually have a perfect edge. So you see that now I merged that extra rim, but because I used the edge extend, you can clearly see, I'm gonna show you this in a bit bigger fashion. You can see that the edge extend here, the color edge, just fixed that edge problem that I had here on the scan line. So whenever you have a scan line issue with edges, um, because of course that's normal, it's normal because the scan line render in the relighting node is not as good as a, tree, as a CG render in terms of uh, antilization. So whenever you have those kind of issues, just use a color edge. You can find them uh, in Wikipedia. You can use a color edge, you can use an X ext edge extend. There's, there's at least five or six different nodes in Wikipedia that can do the same. That's pretty much it. Now, one last thing that I wanted to show you is that um, you can also add more lights and that's really handy. For example, if you want to put another line, you could do two rim lights for the price of one. So then I can, if I put a scene here, so you see now I have light two. Now light two, which is also on the bottom, let's imagine for a moment that I decide to put light two as a little extra light, maybe on this side of the CG. So maybe there's two rim lights, maybe there's one on one side and one on the other side. So you see now I have an extra light, which is a light that is actually bouncing in his face and you actually have a little bit of extra bounce light happening on that side. Now, of course, this is all a creative decision, of course, but now if I go back to my specular, that extra light is now part of my specular light. So now I have two lights. Of course, you could, it's it's up to you if you want to choose to just have one real light uh, with all the lights together, or you can actually render one real light per light and then have 
each of them individually shuffled, copied into your comp. Uh, the main approach that you want to do on this is uh, that you want to make sure that if you do a specular uh, material, you put it on the specular pass. If, for example, you do a diffuse, you put it on the diffuse pass. It's very important for you to actually organize it like that, uh, because then when you're doing color correction, you don't affect other materials because, of course, a bounce light or a specular light shouldn't be affecting reflections. So there's a lot of things like that. But, you know, this tutorial is already going way too long. So I just wanted to show you this really quickly. And that is, that is it, really. Um, so, of course, if you think about it, it doesn't really mean that you need to use the relight node to actually relight. That's really not what it is all about. The biggest use that I use for this uh, node is actually for color correction. A lot of times uh, you want to call it correct in 3D and not really just using masks. I'm not a very big fan of using masks and rotoscoping for doing advanced color correction. It's much easier if you use the normals pass and position and the ZDAP to do color correction because you are color correcting a volume. You're color correcting a CG object. So why not use 3D tools for color correction? So using this technique that I just showed you really allows you to use very small spotlights in different areas to, for example, like you saw on that statue, you can light up a bit of Enzo's face. Or if you want, you can put a spotlight and light up a bit of his sword and his fist. So there's really a lot of ways and it's it, it goes beyond using a little mask in 2D to just tweak the color correction. It really allows you to color correct in 3D. And I think that's uh, what I really enjoy about using this technique. And that is it for me today. Um, thank you so much for watching. And as always, subscribe Hugo's Desk for more of these videos. Um, also follow me on Twitter, Hugo C. Kerre. And please like the video and leave me a comment. I would love to know what other techniques you might be using and uh, what you thought about these techniques. Also, if you would like to support me with $1, please support me in Patreon uh, so that I can do more of these videos more often. Well, thank you so much for watching and I see you guys very soon on Hugo's desk. Bye bye.